go. How do you know? Mr. Kadai is an expert on love, which is really quite remarkable, considering he's never been in it. Good morning, Miss Balaj. He didn't yell at me. What's wrong with him? He has other things on his mind. Mr. Marichek's very upset. He is? Again? And you know who gets the worst of it. Mr. Nowak. Yes, sir. You see this? Yes. You know what it is? Of course, the tube of Mona Lisa cold cream. Here, let's see you try it. The back came off. I was under the impression it was your responsibility to see what's used for car control. If that's responsibility too much for you, Mr. Nowak. Oh, I'm sorry. If that responsibility is too much for you, Mr. Noah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mirachek, I... Or is there something wrong with the tooth? Are they defective? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? Then it wouldn't be asking too much for the cream to come out of the right end? It wouldn't be asking too much. Thank you, Mr. Noah. That's all I wanted to know. Stop. Three. My life before seems so unreal. I see myself then as an utterly superficial girl who has nothing to do with who I am now. Wouldn't go back to being her for the world. You're sure? You know a lot about, about yourself, don't you? I guess it comes from all of that writing you do. I want to be a real writer one day. I know I can write. I'm my harshest critic. But who knows if I truly have talent or not? What do you want to do? I don't know. Some kind of job that doesn't take much brain. Maybe if I have you drive. That's ridiculous. No, it's true. I'm completely idiot. You're too hard on yourself. I didn't have much time for me on the outside. Maybe if you'd gone to my school. Whisper. Oh, Peter, I miss so many things, don't you? Sometimes I'm dr I dream I'm back in our old apartment. I wake up and I don't know where I am, and I wonder why I can't just run outside. Oh, you can see the moon from here, just like you said. How beautiful. Look at our attic, the moonlight coming in. Are you cold? No, well, maybe just a little. Here. <laughs> Peter, have you ever kissed a girl? I guess so. You have? When? It wasn't a big deal or nothing. Or anything. Tell me. It was on my birthday. I was playing folded. I don't even know who the girl was. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being kissed or anything, though I'm sure Margo would never kiss a boy unless she were engaged to him. This is fun. I love Christmas wrapping. It's certainly a pleasant change. You know, for the last month I've done practically nothing but fill those darn tubes of Mona Lisa. Well, what do you care? You're in love with some nice, eligible young man, and pretty soon you'll be able to kiss all of this goodbye. Tell me, what's he like? Tell me all about him. I love to suffer. Well... Is he tall? So-so. So-so six feet? So-so five feet? I never measured. Color? One. Hello, Dave. How are you today? Well, I don't have a sense of myself today. I feel rather worthless. Do you think of me as worthless? <laughs> oh. I don't know. I was just trying to make a pleasantry. You know, my wife left me. She married my father. He's 80, but she prefers me. Gee, I'm sorry to hear that. Are there any restaurants you can recommend? My Aunt Helen is coming to town. I think I'm, I'm thinking to go out find a copy of Final Exit. Is that the correct title? Do you have a copy? Well, gosh, no. I never read books. I don't have the time. I have a lot of time now that I'm fired. <laughs> Gee, I didn't know you'd been fired. What happened? Well, I was incompetent. I don't know why they hired me. What was your profession exactly? Well, it's hard to say, really. Well, forget it then. I don't want to know. And you can recommend, and you can't recommend a restaurant, I guess? I've lost my appetite. I'm not sleeping. I'm losing weight, and my hair is falling out. Well, you know, I hope this isn't some call for psychological help that I'm not picking up, but basically, I think you're just having a really bad day, and I'm sure you'll feel a lot better tomorrow. And you know, your wife, well, she was rubbish. Good riddance. Your father, so he's sexy for an 80-year-old. Your job, you didn't like it anyway. And you needed to lose some weight, so all this sleep loss and body loss and is really quite attractive. So tomorrow we'll see it all differently. Well, goodbye. Tomorrow I'll see things differently. Tomorrow I'll be dead. Are you then? I haven't finished talking to you. 
I thought of a good restaurant. But you never get the name of it from me. So long, good riddance. Well, death tomorrow. <laughs> never, I promise. I want them to leave. You'd put us out on the street? There are other hiding places. We will find you something. Don't worry about the money, I'll find you the money. Mr. Frank, you told my husband you'd never forget what he did for you when you first came to Amsterdam. If my husband had any obligation, she was paid for. Edith, I've never seen you like this, for God's sake. You can't throw Peter out. He hasn't done anything. Peter can stay. It wouldn't feel right without father. Mother, please. They'll be killed on the street. And right, you can't send them away. They can stay till me finds the police. But we're switching rooms. I don't want any of the food. Let's divide it up right now. We're not going to... <laughs> We're not going to divide up some rotten potatoes. Mrs. Frank, Mr. Frank, Margo, and Peter, Mrs. Van Dan, Mr. Van Dan, myself, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Mr. Dussel, Frank. please, don't. No more, no more, Mr. Dussel. I beg you, I can't bear it. Stop, I can't take it. All this, all this happening. Enough. Margo, Mr. Dussel, everyone, back to your rooms. Come, Edith, Mr. Dussel. I think the potatoes can wait. 